Welcome to the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please turn to number 562 in Breaking Bread. Sing of the Lord's goodness, number 562. Sing of the Lord's goodness, Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And welcome to our celebration of the Lord's Supper on this weekend, when we turn to the Lord in all the storms of life. He bids us come to him. So let's turn to him once again and beg for mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to, to the, the Son, Son, and to, to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and ever, ever shall be, world without end. end. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may be found worthy to enter into the inheritance which you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever, Amen. Amen. And let us listen to the word of God. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah, came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, 
I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. There is the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, He was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened and immediately Beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. In the gospel we just heard, Jesus tells, tells Peter to step out of the safety of the boat and walk to him across the water. Buoyed by the great faith of Jesus, his friend, Peter steps into the roiling water and takes his first steps. Only when he looks away from Jesus does his faith falter and he sinks into the sea. One question that might occur to you is, what was Jesus thinking? Why would he ask a mere mortal to do something miraculous? Jesus had confidence in his ability to walk on water. He was was human, true, but he could also summon divine power It was part of his mission to calm the wind and the sea. But Peter was just an ordinary fisherman. He knew that people who fall into the water will sink like a stone unless they swim for their lives. Why would Jesus tell Peter to come to him across the water? Maybe Jesus wanted to shift 
Peter's attention away from his terror at the possibility of the boat going down. Maybe Jesus wanted his friend to come closer so he could show him that it was indeed Jesus and not a ghost. Maybe Jesus wanted to reassure Peter that no matter what the danger, Jesus would be with him in it. The obvious lesson seems to be that when you keep your eyes on Jesus, you can cope with the storms of life in amazing and even gravity-defying ways. As long as Peter trusted his friend, he walked on water. When fear got his attention away from Jesus, he began to sink. The lovely end of the story is that Jesus immediately saved him when he cried out in terror. <clears throat> That's the lesson. The risen one is going to take care of you even in seasons of mortal per peril. In fact, fear's hidden blessing is its invitation to put all your trust in the risen Lord. In the midst of fear and suffering, saints and sinners alike cry out in search of reassurance. The question that can drive many people away from religion is, where is God when there is pain and hurt and suffering? This is the ageless question that leads some to belief and others to unbelief. One third of the Psalms lament the absence of God. Often in moments of greatest human need, God seems nowhere to be found. Yet Christians are people who have their lives centered in the Paschal mystery. That is in God with us, but God's suffering. In both of the readings today, Elijah and Peter show that there are many ways to recognize God even when there is confusion and turmoil. Who are the people in your own experience who witness to hope in the midst of disaster? Think of the people you know who are struggling for their sobriety. Their humility and trust is palpable. Even like Elijah in the first reading, 12-step programs around the world involve ordinary people who may have felt terrified and abandoned by God, much like Peter, who affirm their belief in a higher power. On this 19th Sunday of Ordinary Time, there are some whose suffering obscures their ability to see that God is indeed with them. During this pandemic, have you talk to people who are depressed, it's almost as if lack of contact with other people is putting, on, putting them on the edge of their resources. When your dear ones are afraid or in trouble, the faith tradition of the Catholic Church can be a great consolation. The tradition teaches that God in Christ will accompany all who cry out in their time of need. This promise of companionship is the bedrock of our religious hope. It is this hope that Sunday by Sunday we hear proclaimed in the Gospels, preached in the homilies, nourished at the banquet of the Lord. You want all the people you love to receive the same consolation of assurance when they are in trouble from doubt or fear. <clears throat> in today's first reading, nature's greatest displays of power are not the bearers of God's presence. Rather, it is the still, small voice that arises out of the depths of God's silence. If you want to hear the voice of the Lord, you need enter this silence. It was out of this necessity that Jesus often withdrew from the crowds and even from his dearest disciples. You cannot hear the voice 
apart from the silence that forms it. The solemnity of the Assumption of Mary is this Saturday. Belief in Mary's bodily assumption into heaven is meant to reinforce our hope of our own glorious resurrection. Especially when people are in pain or struggle with an addiction, in the times when the body can seem to be the enemy, Christ's resurrection and Mary's assumption confirm that we have God's promise of a new life to come. Jesus does not con condemn those who have little faith. He does not refuse his presence to those who fear. But his question, why did you doubt, challenges us. Remember, he has already proved with his life his desire to save us. So let us renew our profession of faith by proclaiming once again our baptismal promises. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried, and rose again on the third day? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are blessed to profess it in Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. And now, let us bring our prayers to our Father. For the church during summer, that in the storms of life we will not, do not doubt God's immense mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, that his encyclicals will teach us how to listen to the still, small voice of God so we can reconcile with one another and with the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the new Jesuit volunteers as they begin their year of service. For the Jesuit novices who pronounced their first vows on Saturday and for the safe return of our families camping at Fort Stevens, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For respectful dialogue, as we seek to build bridges to span our political polarization, and for the Blessed Mother this Saturday, on the Feast of Her Assumption, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people sick from the COVID-19 virus, for their caregivers, and healthcare providers, for researchers searching for a vaccine, and for responsible use of masks and social distancing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all in our community who are sick, lonely, or alienated, for all our faithful departed, and for our own intentions, which we remember in the quiet of our hearts, We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, in the storms of life, help us to seek Jesus as our companion and to place our trust in you. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. O Lord, you are holy indeed. You are the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, like the dewfall, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Alexander, our Bishop, and all who serve your holy people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and martyrs, St. Ignatius and Mother Marie Rose, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be found worthy to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now at the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Let us pray for peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And for our spiritual communion, Jesus, may all that is you flow into me. May your body and blood be my food and drink. May your passion and death be my strength and life. Jesus, with you by my side, enough has been given. May the shelter I seek be the shadow of your cross. Let me not run from the love you offer, but hold me safe from the forces of evil. On each of my dyings, shed your light and your love. Keep calling to me until that day comes when with your saints I may praise you forever. Amen.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our announcements, uh, please do check out the website for signing up for the RCIA program for this fall, for sacramental prep for our children, and for our confirmation program that will be this fall. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, do love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And please join in singing number 174, Hallelujah is our song. 174 in Breaking Bread. <laughs> 